So welcome to this lecture. In the earlier lecture, I talk about uh, angular momentum. Now I will define, or I will talk about a very important term that is known as torque. And after that, I will talk about law of conservation of linear momentum and angular momentum because torque is related to the law of conservation of angular momentum and whereas simple force is relating to the law of conservation of linear momentum so that's why I put all these three ideas together so let me define the torque first of all. Okay, so suppose this is the xy plane and say this is z-axis and say there is a particle and it is fixed to the or attached to the origin with the position vector r and if I apply a force over it force along this direction means force should not be applied along this direction other than this we can force apply force in any direction we can apply in this way or in this way like this then what will happen the particle starts if if I apply a force over this then it starts rotating like this it will follow such type of trajectory and it's like a if there is a door and door is fixed at one end and if I apply some force over here towards the or inward direction of the plane of the paper and door is fixed at this then what will happen it starts rotating so that means it will become like this right so that's what will happen so this is known as the torque now let us try to understand it so if a force F This is the force. If you force F acting on a particle at point P and this P point is fixed, sorry, it is attached to the origin, say in this case which we have considered, and particle at point P with position vector R. And if due to application of this force, particle starts rotating, then Mathematically, torque is defined as torque is defined as this tau is equal to R cross F. So this is the basic definition of torque. And torque is always perpendicular to the plane containing R and F. Right? So this is now, let us try to compare it with another very important quantity that is the uh, force. So, so, let us do one thing. It's a very important note which we have to keep in mind that as forces 
defined as a rate of change of momentum similarly we can define torque as rate of change of angular momentum so that means as force is playing a role in the linear motion in the similar fashion torque is or uh, as force is playing the role in case of translational motion in the similar fashion torque is playing the same role but in case of rotational motion now we have to see that how this uh, uh, torque is the rate of change of momentum means here force must be equal to dp by dt means rate of change of momentum similarly this torque must be equal to dl by dt so let us try to prove it here so to so to prove it let us recall a relationship that angular momentum is r cross p that's what we have did in the earlier lecture now if i take time derivative of both sides So if I take time derivative, then what will happen? It is d l upon d t must be equal to d upon d t r cross p. So applying product rule here, so it is d r upon d t cross p plus r cross d p upon d t. but this dr upon dt is basically velocity and it is mass into velocity plus r cross f but this m can be taken and b cross b it will become and this is equal to zero because the cross product of a vector with itself is always zero because it's making an angle zero degree and so it is r cross f so that means i can say that dl upon dt is simply r cross f but r cross f we have defined as the torque thus to conclude it we can say that torque which we have defined as r cross f is simply can be written as dl upon dt right so this is the required relationship between the torque and the angular momentum now let us try to discuss the conservation of momentum so for conservation of momentum as we have talked about two types of momentum it one is the linear momentum and another is the angular momentum as we know that in terms of linear momentum force is dp upon dt similarly torque is dl upon dt means rate of change of momentum so if i assume that that if no force acting no external force acting on the system that means this force must be equal to zero and this makes dp upon dt is equal to zero which implies momentum will be a constant quantity because derivative of some constant quantity must be zero that's why i can say that so that means this is the law of conservation of linear momentum and similarly if no torque or no external torque acts that means this is zero is equal to dl by dt and this again makes l as a constant quantity so this is known as law of conservation of angular momentum so let me write down their definition that uh, or the definition of law of conservation of linear momentum and angular momentum so first of all i will talk about law of conservation of uh, linear momentum 
So that's fine. There is no external force acting on a particle acting on a particle the linear momentum remain constant the linear momentum remain constant and this is known as law of conservation of linear momentum similarly when no external torque acting on the particle acting on the particle or the system of particles or on the system on the particle the angular momentum remains constant and this is known as law of conservation of angular moment right so with this this lecture is finished so in the next lecture i will talk about the rigid body and various theorems relating to moment of inertia which are applicable to uh, rigid bodies of various shapes so that's all for this lecture